second year that I've had completely off where I can really focus on actually writing, you know, and uh, not having to pick up and leave and go on a tour. So, you know, the work to me is, uh, is shows a marked, a marked improvement in terms of evolution uh, for me. I, like I haven't, I wouldn't have been able to get there unless I had everything that I had done before. It's kind of uh, the next level up. So uh, it's, it's, I think it would make a great audio file record because it's, uh, it's acoustic and it's been recorded very well by a great engineer from Japan. Um, every time you grab, maybe the muse strikes and you have a, a new musical idea, how do you record it or what's your first Who's backup? That? What, what, what's your first voice book? memo? <laughs> okay, perfect. Voice memo. I used to have a four track on here. Okay. Uh, and then somehow I did, I, it wasn't updated or they went out of business or something. Uh, but the voice memo, you got to start with a great idea. And then I, I, if I like it enough, I write it out and then I work on the other parts. You know. But the voice memos, by the way, are getting better and better. <laughs> And better to the point. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I might not need a studio on the, on, the, on the iPhone 18, you know, whenever that comes out. And I've called, I have been went as far as calling Bob Ludwig, who some of you might know is like the most famous uh, East Coast. Well, him and him and. Uh, Bernie's on the West Coast. Bernie's on the West Coast. Bernie Burnham, Grunman's on the West Coast. He's done all of the big, big, big records. And, yeah. and Bob Ludwig is, uh, you know, considered a god in, in that whole field of mastering. And so I called him up last year and I said, hey, Bob, I gotta ask you a question. Has anybody come in with like voice memos for you to master? <laughs> <laughs> he started laughing. And that laugh was like, because yeah, it's, it's starting. I said, what? So it's, 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 to me, it's not compressed, but it is. It just sounds, it has a unique sound quality, you know. Because oh, it's just getting, it's like the cameras on the phones are getting better and better as time goes on. So sure, and everything is valid when you need to 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 record an idea. So voice well, memo, if it, if it's okay for you, it's great. Hmm? If if voice memo is great, it's okay for you when you need to grab. Oh, an idea, phones? when you need to save an idea. Oh, well, the voice memo. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. I have a zillion in my pocket. Always you handy. Know? <laughs> I can even sell some ideas today if you're interested. <laughs> but who are your guitar heroes? Am I still on? Okay. My guitar heroes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I've, I've played with a couple of them. You know, Paco was definitely a hero. Uh, my first guitar teacher, which who, who was an, an Armenian, was a phenomenal jazz guitar player, so he was a big influence on me. Um, Larry Coriel, who was really the, the godfather of uh, jazz rock, bringing jazz and rock together as fusion. Uh, and that was about when I was 15. So the proximity of my home to New York City was uh, literally between 30 and 40 minutes. So I would, I would uh, when I was a teenager, we'd take the bus to the GW uh, Bridge, and then we'd take the A train all the way down to the village. And I got a lot of my um, inspiration from going to shows. And you had a wide variety of shows every night of the week, you know, from every genre of music. And then I've also spent a lot of time by going by myself to, to Latin clubs to watch the Latin big bands up on uh, 86th Street. Uh, and I spent all my days playing percussion, you know, on, on my school type tabletop. Anyway, the guitar players, in addition, I mean, playing with John and Paco was very inspiring. Uh, my favorite guitar players, that also are great composers, like Chick Corea on the piano was also a great composer equal to his playing ability. Um, I, people like Ralph Towner, who's an American who lives in Rome, uh, he is equally phenomenal on guitar 
and piano and composing. So he's, he's a great source of inspiration. And then the last one I mentioned is Egberto Gismonti from Brazil. He's also, I don't know how he does it, but he's, he plays piano as well as guitar and composes on the same level. So I'm very envious, but, but they provide constant inspiration. And then I grew up with the Beatles, and I still love the Beatles, you know. Yeah. In fact, George Martin, uh, uh, on my birthday in 2008, uh, honored me with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the BBC. So I got to sit with George, and the first thing he said to me was, who do you think was the best guitar player? The Beatles. I think it was a purple glass. Um, and I said, well, everybody would think, well, George, George Harrison was the lead guitar player. No, because it was Paul. <laughs> so it was a real, for me, it was one of the great moments of, of the life to sit with this man, you know. And I told him, when I was a kid, the Beatles were a great influence. And he's, you're kidding me. Really? I said, yeah, well, what, what, what's so strange about that? He goes, well, I guess he was thinking, you know, my style, you wouldn't get that if you heard my records. But if you heard the mixes, you would hear the way he mixed. He mixed extreme right and left. You'd hear a cello coming out of the right channel without any reverb bleed going to the left channel. And then you hear John's voice, which it was so big coming out of the other channel, mainly because they were working with four track or eight track, later eight track, and, and it was just bigger. That's where digital needs to go, in my opinion.